Hey guys, it's me, Tiana Jones, also known as Callie Faye, and I'm with Callie Girl Books LLC, and today we have our All Lives Do Exist Sustainable Development Goals Summit 2022. Welcome to all the guests worldwide. And so I want to go ahead and we have one more special guest, Job Okello. One of the greatest writers of all time, William Shakespeare, wrote in his classical play, Coriolanus, that what is the city but the people? True, the people are the city. This is a statement made by a man who lived from 1564 to 1616. Surely cities are the people, not the buildings. Therefore, the design of cities and buildings without seriously considering their inhabitants is catastrophic, societal, and fatal. As the UN said, the challenges cities face can be overcome in ways that allow them to continue to thrive and grow while improving resource use and reducing pollution and poverty. The future we want includes cities of opportunities for all with access to basic services, energy, housing, transportation, and more. Wow, I love this statement. Sustainable Development Goal number 11 seeks to make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. The World Bank says in 2020, 56% of the global population was living in urban areas. According to the Sustainable Development Goals Report 2021, between 2014 and 2018, the proportion of the urban population living in slums worldwide increased from 23% to 24%, translated to over 1 billion slum dwellers who are most prevalent in three regions. 370 million in Eastern and Southeastern Asia, 238 million in Sub-Saharan Africa, and 226 million in Central and Southern Asia. Only about half of the world's population live within 500 meters of walking distance of low-capacity transport systems, such as buses or trams, and within 1,000 meters of high-capacity transport systems, such as trains and ferries, according to the 2019 data from 610 cities in 95 countries. The statistics need to be reversed. Concerted efforts are needed on the part of everyone, otherwise the situation will only worsen. Without concerted efforts on the parts of governments at local, national and international levels, in collaboration with civil society organizations, development partners and the masses, the number of slum dwellers will continue increasing, especially in the developing countries. Shall we really take into account the needs and concerns of the masses in planning, financing and policy making for our urban areas so that we leave no one behind? Shall we properly plan and manage our urban centers? Shall we really provide adequate, reliable, and resilient, sustainable infrastructure and housing in our urban centers, especially in Africa and Asia? Shall we really provide adequate, reliable, and resilient, sustainable infrastructure and housing in our urban centers, especially in Africa and Asia? Shall we really provide reliable, affordable, safe, accessible, and sustainable public transport systems, well integrated with walking and cycling paths in our urban centers? Shall we improve road safety by expanding public transport with special attention to the needs of those in vulnerable situations, women, children, persons with disabilities, and older persons? Shall we have reliable, meaningful, and sustainable long-term policies, urban mobility plans, and targeted investments in our urban centers? Shall we ensure access for all to adequate, safe, and affordable housing and basic services and upgrade slums in urban centers? Shall we enhance inclusive and sustainable urbanization and capacity for participatory, integrated, and sustainable human settlement planning and management in all countries, especially African countries and Asian countries? Shall we strengthen our efforts to protect and safeguard the world's cultural and natural heritage in our cities? Shall we significantly reduce the number of deaths in our urban centers and substantially decrease the direct economic losses relative to the global gross domestic products caused by disasters including water-related disasters with a focus on protecting the poor and people in vulnerable situations. Shall we reduce the adverse per capita environmental impact of cities including by paying special attention to air quality and municipal and other waste management? Shall we provide universal access to safe, inclusive and accessible green and public spaces in particular for women and children, older persons and persons with disabilities? Shall we support positive economic, social, and environmental links between urban, peri-urban, and rural areas by strengthening local, national, and international development planning? Shall we substantially increase the number of cities and human settlements adopting and implementing integrated policies and plans towards inclusion, resource efficiency, mitigation, and adaptation to climate change, resilience to disasters, and develop and implement holistic disaster risk management at all levels in the world? 
Shall the developed countries seriously support the least developed countries, including through financial and technical assistance in building sustainable and resilient buildings while utilizing local materials? Shall we ensure proper solid waste management in our urban centers? Shall we really equip the authorities, as well as the masses in our cities, with proper disaster risk reduction strategies? Shall we take serious measures to control population growth so that the population sizes do not outweigh the capacities of our cities to accommodate the people? Shall we properly provide adequate infrastructure and refurbish the aged and aging infrastructure in our cities? Shall we provide reliable, affordable and sustainable housing to all people in our cities without discrimination whatsoever? Shall we provide adequate health, education, financial and other services to people in our cities, especially those in slums? Shall we take critical measures to prevent slum creation in our cities? Shall we take serious measures to manage flooding and control pollution and congestion in our cities? Shall we provide adequate provision with streets to cater for pedestrians and cyclists of all kinds? In the words of the 35th President of the United States, the great John F. Kennedy, we will neglect our cities to our peril, for in neglecting them, we neglect the nation. Ha, what a visionary statement from a visionary man for a visionary world. Given the numerous crises we face in the world today, sustainable cities have never been demanded, desired and deserved more than today. Therefore, we cannot afford to neglect our cities. We must give our cities the seriousness they deserve, demand and desire. Although the growth of many cities provides many opportunities to many people, it also contributes to large financial, social, environmental and other inequalities. High rates of unemployment, extreme poverty, poor sanitation, poor health conditions, high level of immorality and high crime rates among others are concentrated in the urban areas. Accordingly, governments struggle to accommodate the rising population in these areas. Concerted efforts are urgently needed to address the various challenges. Many urban centers, especially in African countries, are built without first of all carrying out proper feasibility studies. Accordingly, the urban areas do not properly accommodate their inhabitants. We must reimagine, redesign and rethink our urbanization to mitigate the challenges that accrue due to urbanization. We must have in place and implement proper local, national and international urban policies developed in collaboration with all the stakeholders to promote transformative, productive, inclusive, equitable and environmentally resilient urban development over the long term. We must properly design roads in urban areas to minimize road accidents which are rampant in many urban areas, especially in African countries, partly due to poor road designs. We must seriously fight corruption Corruption, corruption, corruption. We must fight corruption, especially in African countries, so that we don't misuse the resources meant for developing urban areas. We must improve the sustainability of our building's infrastructure and build facilities according to sustainable building practices that will help to reduce energy consumption in all our cities. We must heavily invest in the research, development, and deployment of products and services that improve access to resilient buildings, transport, green spaces, and utilities in our cities. We must seriously invest in environmental protection in our communities. We must heavily invest in educating the masses on sustainable urbanization and human settlement so that they can know and fulfill their responsibilities. We must provide equitable access to essential services for people in our urban areas without discrimination whatsoever. We must create frameworks, policies and regulations that enhance the journey to zero emission, especially in our urban areas. We must invest in green spaces and parks in our cities. We must have in place strong security systems to curb the high crime rates in urban areas. We must all take responsibility and perform our respective roles to ensure that we have smart, reliable, sustainable, resilient, safe and inclusive cities and human settlements. Smart cities, smart human settlements, smart life, smart future. Reliable cities, reliable human settlements, reliable life, reliable future. Sustainable cities, sustainable human settlements, sustainable life, sustainable future. Resilient cities, resilient human settlements, resilient life, resilient future. Safe cities, safe human settlements, safe life, safe future. Inclusive cities, inclusive human settlements, inclusive life, inclusive future. In her book, The Death and Life of Great American Cities, the American Canadian journalist, author and theorist, Jane Jacobs, wrote, Cities have the capacity of providing something for everybody only because and only when they are created by everybody. Wow, I love this statement. What a nice statement, what a powerful statement, what a soul awakening statement. Today in many cities, especially in African countries, there seems to be inadequate consideration of the importance of people in design and the impact that poor design can have on lives, productivity, health and holistic development in urban areas. We decry the many challenges in our urban areas, yet we are responsible for all those challenges. 
in the words of the sagacious Greek philosopher Plato, a city is what it is because our citizens are what they are. This is a nerve-wracking, soul-awakening and eye-opening statement. Therefore, to improve our cities, we must improve the conditions of the people in the cities. To empower our cities, we must empower the people in the cities. To build our cities holistically, we must build the people holistically. To have sustainable cities, we must have sustainable human settlements. The Australian researcher, author in Sanskrit, Bruce Charles Bill Mollison, once wondered, why is it that we don't build human settlements that will feed themselves and fuel themselves and catch their own water when any human settlement could do that easily? Think about that statement for a moment. At no time in history have reliable, self-reliant, and sustainable human settlements ever been desired, demanded, and deserved more than today. We must always properly tame human settlements. We must always properly check human settlements. We must always properly control human settlements. We must always properly sustain human settlements. We must always properly plan human settlements. We must always properly organize human settlements. We must always properly monitor human settlements. We must always properly manage human settlements. In the impeccable words of the great American author, social critic, and public speaker, James Howard, counselor, human settlements are like living organisms. They must grow, and they will change. But we can decide on the nature of that growth, on the quality and the character of it, and where it ought to go. Wow, what a powerful statement. What a serious statement. What an eye-opening statement. The question is, shall we always properly decide on the nature of the growth, the quality, and the character of human settlements, especially in our urban areas? Thank you so, so, so much. Thank you so much, Job. And that was truly inspirational. What are we going to do to make a difference in this world? Thank you.